What I haven't told you guys yet is I was starting a brand new job the next morning at 5.30 a.m. And here I am taking acid in the attic. I was like, all right, I can do this. Just wait for the white van, get in, and pretend you're normal. Near the beginning of my channel, I released a video that was titled My First Ever LSD Trip, which was a story about the first time that I kind of accidentally tried LSD. It's one hell of a story, and during the great purge of 2018, this was one of the videos that got removed. Let's retake the story. Not only does this showcase just how unprepared I was, but it's also the story of the first time I ever tried a traditional psychedelic, which you could argue got me into this field of work, that being making these YouTube videos, talking about drug education. It seems like a disservice to the theme of my channel to not have this monumentous uh, story presented for people to watch. Without further ado, let's dive headfirst into the tale of the first acid trip. According to YouTube guidelines shown here, videos which intend to educate are documentary by nature and do not glorify the use of drugs. Both abide by the community safety guidelines and are eligible for monetization. The following video does not glorify the use of drugs. Instead, attempts to be non-biased while delivering vital life safety information disguised as entertainment. Now, before we do get into this video, I have to make it crystal effing clear that I do not recommend that anybody takes any psychedelic, especially in any of the contextual scenarios that I'm about to describe for you guys here, because you're about to learn just what can go wrong when you don't follow the guidelines, because this is a terrible horrible story of exactly what not to do. So please learn from me and don't make the same mistakes I made. Now the story takes place when I was about 26 years old and I was just at the height or coming down from an MDMA addiction. I had only tried MDMA about three or four months prior to trying LSD and it soon became my absolute obsession. My days were basically spent conjuring up ways that I could make money or sell shit so that I could spend my evenings basically sometimes getting high all by myself and going for epic walks. So essentially what happened was I was about to put my girlfriend Jasmine through pure torture tonight and my reward for torturing her was going to be MDMA. <laughs> Basically, I had it in my stupid head that everybody had to experience a strip club at least once. So the night started off with myself and my friend Anthony hanging out. And Anthony, um, he just wanted to see some tits. And I knew that Jasmine, who we would just freshly start dating, had never been to a strip club. And I was like, well, let's subject her to torture. Convinced her somehow to go. And when we got there, she was really, really not enjoying herself. She found the entire environment, I think, beneath her. She was really mad at me. And she hated the entire ordeal. And she felt, I think, disgusted with me and the whole thing. After we left the strip club, she and I parted ways. I left with Anthony and she left on her own to go get a drink with a work friend. I didn't know at the time she was getting a drink with a work friend. I just knew she left pissed at me. And I think maybe on some level I wanted her to be mad because I wanted, as um, some people with addictive tendencies do this, they want to create situations for themselves so they can use. So Anthony didn't want the night to be over and he wasn't addicted to MDMA. He wasn't a usual person that I took it with. I maybe tried it with him once and he was kind of itching to get that MD amazing effect back again. We coalesced and came to the agreement that we were going to go drive out about 45 minutes away to my M dealer and pick up some M. I was a little apprehensive about doing this because it had been recently put forth in my skull that my use was getting a little out of hand and this marks the turning point of me consciously wanting to slow down and essentially cut off taking it like once or twice a week, which as you all know, is a surefire way to hitting brain damage. I was kind of half in, half out. I kind of wanted to do it, but I didn't. And even, you know, using her being mad at me as some kind of sick fuel to escape in a high wasn't enough. Like I was actually coming out of the addiction. So we drove to get some. And the whole time I was in my head not really wanting to. Um, so we get to the drug dealer's house. I go inside. He was this bald guy, but not bald like me. Bald in the sense of not accepting his baldness. He had the horseshoe, so that's where it goes all around the side. And he was only like 25. He was this very lanky, almost emaciated kind of guy with, with the horseshoe hair at 25. <laughs> he, he looked funny. He kind of looked like this. <laughs> he was such a dick. He was a nice dude, all right? Um, so we get there, and he's like, he's all excited. He's like, hey, man, my dealer just gave me some of the best acid I've ever had. It's triple dipped. And I'm like, I've never tried acid before. I'm thinking maybe, maybe I can get away from 
doing MDMA tonight by stepping down to something that's not as dangerous for my brain and still feeling good. I had not researched the effects of LSD once. I had absolutely no clue this side of the moon what to expect, okay? Just just to paint this picture for you guys. And my only idea of what could happen was what I saw in the movies, like, I don't know, maybe in Dumbo in the acid scene. You know, you see pink elephants. Like, I had no freaking idea. I expected to feel kind of good. I thought, oh, maybe I'll get like a euphoric push, like with MDMA. And he assured me, he's like, oh yeah, you'll feel amazing. His advice was, he said, hold it under your tongue until your tongue goes numb and then swallow it. Now, if any of you guys know what LSD that makes your tongue go numb is, it's not LSD, okay? That, that's 25i or 25x dash NBOME. It's one of the NBOME compounds. That's fake acid that has resulted in deaths. The LSD should either be tasteless or have a slight metallic taste, but it absolutely should not make your tongue go numb. So the advice that this guy gave me was basically how to take NBOME because NBOME isn't orally active. You have to dissolve it in your tongue, which is worrisome looking back because his only experience was with NBOME. So of course he thought this shit was strong because what he gave me was real acid. I'll get to that in a minute. And I only had enough money for the MDMA. So I did buy the M and I was like, I actually don't have enough for the acid. And he was such a sweetheart dealer. He's like, no, it's fine, man. Just hit me back next time. Like he really wanted me to experience it. I guess he just wanted to share the... Share the psychedelic love. A lot of people who are into psychedelics, they are very generous and they share them with their friends because they feel that there's a message there that can help a lot of people. Whether that's true or not is a story for another video. So I left with one tab. I didn't get two. I didn't know what Anthony's stance was on acid. Before I got in the car, I dropped the tab under my tongue. I got beside Anthony and I was like, we got the MDMA and let's head back to my place so we can weigh it out and take a capsule. I looked at my clock and I was like, yeah, so maybe in like, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour, I'll start feeling something. And I just realized that I forgot to mention when I was recording this video, I was worried at first that it was bogus tabs because my tongue never went numb, which is how I knew looking back that it was real acid. If you guys know acid lingo, there's really no such thing as triple dipped. What that could mean is it was 300 micrograms. Now I doubt it was 300 micrograms. With my experience with acid after that, and considering, again, it was my first time ever taking it, so my receptors were brand new, out of the box, fresh, it was maybe 200 micrograms. It was definitely more than 100. This was intense, man. So around 20 minutes in, we're, we're on the highway. You know, when you're driving, there's the, the street lights. I noticed that as we passed them, they were starting to bend a little bit. It almost looked like they were starting to like bend into us, like a jaw that was slowly starting to close, but it was always in the process of closing. So it was like, all right, that's weird. That really didn't concern me very much. What was concerning was the feeling I was getting in my gut. What it was doing was exacerbating the negative emotions that I was trying to compress and harden around my relationship with Jasmine. I didn't like her being mad at me. Even though I'm making myself sound like an asshole by dragging her to the strip club, I was very playful by nature. And like in my defense, I just thought it was something silly that we could do. I really didn't realize the extent that it was going to piss her off. So I felt bad. And what I was feeling building in my insides was those emotions taking physical form and completely overcoming my conscious thought. So I started to feel really, really uncomfortable and sick. And you pair this with the nausea, especially when you've never tripped before and you're in a moving gosh darn vehicle and you don't know like what to expect. Like your mind is ripe for this brand new experience that is probably going to take you to some deep places that you're not ready for, especially if you've never researched what the effects are going to be in your entire life. So I'm starting to boil here. Like, like my fear is starting to simmer, man. It's about to pop over the top of the pot and pour out to the sides. This oatmeal is too hot. It wasn't just right yet. Goddamn those bears. <laughs> bears. Haha, <laughs> who gets the joke? So we're on our way <laughs> to, um, to my house. And he actually was like, you know what? We should get a drink first. So of course he drives to the strip where Jasmine worked at. Now again, I didn't know that she was meeting a friend from work for a drink. Keep in mind, I haven't told Anthony yet that I dropped the tab. I am keeping it to myself because I, A, didn't want him to judge me. And 
I just felt bad because I figured like me telling him was going to mark the end of our night because at that point I was basically saying, no, I'm not doing the M. So we park, we're walking over to the bar and lo and behold, in the corner of my left eye, I see Jasmine sitting with uh, this security guard that I guess she worked with having a drink. And I, it was almost like the visuals at this point were taking on a like demonic undertones maybe there was like red or green like kind of lights nearby but it looked like they were like these greenish red monsters and their faces were starting to like morph and again when you don't know what to expect it's very easy to take a fear-based approach obviously looking back i don't think they were turning into demons it was more so it was highlighting her aggression to me and like i could see her emotions in like a very visual way with the lights and everything and and keep in mind i've got this massive fear response that's glued to all of the emotions that are pouring out of me that I don't know how to contain because this is so brand new. And and I'm seeing her in the corner of my eye. And I remember like seeing her and like like feeling her energy as if it was this outreaching tentacle that was about to constrict my neck and throw me across the street. And I was like, oh my God, dude, let's speed up. Oh my God, there's Jasmine. We gotta walk faster, walk faster. And at this point, I was starting to um realize that this was getting out of hand. I needed to go home. And sleep this off. I basically just told him, look, dude, I'm not feeling well. We can't get a drink. We got to go. And he was really confused. He's like, what do you mean? I thought we were going to take M. I'm like, we have to do it another night. I got to go. And I basically told him, I have never tried acid before. The, the dealer gave me a tab. I, I thought, whatever, let's see if this is something worth doing. So I took it. And I was like, and honestly, man, I just need to sleep this off because I feel really fucked up right now. And he gave me this speech. He's like, oh, my God, man. Why do you always do shit like this? Oh, oh, oh. And I was, I was just like trying to like blank him out because I couldn't handle it. He wasn't like over the top mad, but he was definitely a little mad. I think he realized that I was terrified. So he drives me to my house and I lived in my parents' gosh darn attic at this time. So I go home, I slowly slink my way up to the attic and I lay in my bed and I just remember thinking, oh my God, this is horrible. And the feelings, the anxiety that I was feeling of like, I don't know what's going on. It was pure fear and terror and it was all birthed from all of my emotions coming out around jasmine being mad at me and i was experiencing something that i had never experienced ever in my entire life like i tried salvia at like six or 17 you know a three or four minute experience it was not like this this was very very different this wasn't something that i knew was going to end in a couple minutes i remember i held back as long as i could until i finally called her the last thing i wanted to do was tell her that i took acid because then i was like oh there's no way she'll come and help me and i didn't know she was drunk but i convinced her to come over and i basically just said anthony gave me some weed that must have been laced with something that good old the weed was laced story even though usually when people freak out from weed it's it's not laced at all. It's just really strong weed. <laughs> anyway, I told her like I really needed her help and I was freaking out. It took a bit of convincing, but I think she could hear the terror in my voice and she knew that something was really wrong. So she sucked in all of her feelings of anger and resentment against me and she came over. And when she got there, it was like all of that fear that I was feeling just dissipated. Even though she refused to talk to me and she literally just went upstairs in the bed and closed her eyes and went to sleep without saying a word, just having her presence there and knowing that somebody that cared about me was around in, in case my mind melted into soup and poured out of my nose, that maybe she would be there to grab a bowl and catch it and then pour it back through my eye hole for me. That was very reassuring, having her there to catch my brain soup. And what I haven't told you guys yet is I was starting a brand new job the next morning at 5 30 a.m so my dad set this up with one of his clients meaning my dad would have up talked me meaning if i f this up i'm making my dad look bad and here i am taking acid in the attic when i got a job the next day now i remember thinking there how long could this last so i think i looked up how long does acid last and it was like 8 to 12 hours so i realized that by the time 5 30 was going to roll around it would have been i can't remember exactly eight or nine hours after dropping okay no i got this wrong it was actually only six hours after dropping and i basically spent the entire night 
pacing around just wishing that it would end. It's like I set myself up for the absolute worst trip possible. If you've ever tripped, you know that you want to make sure that maybe even for two days after you have nothing to do so you can kind of integrate all of the crazy emotions and you can be ready for whatever deep shit you're imparted with after you visit Never Neverland. I didn't know any of this. Um, and my whole brain went into like survival self-preservation mode. And if you guys know, if you attach feelings of stress and anxiety to a trip, let alone your first time ever having a trip on any psychedelic, it is a pair made in hell. I was just doing every technique I could think of to calm myself down. And I remember I was like, maybe you can eat some food, but oh my God, no, I have no appetite. I'm nauseous. I didn't even think about putting on music. I was just doing nothing but just like being totally confused and absolutely enamored by this picture in my room of waves that were crashing against rocks. And I shit you not, the visuals made it look like the waves, kind of like a stop motion. It looked like the waves were actually crashing against the rocks. Like I was seeing a live photo in real life, like one of those Harry Potter pictures. It was so cool. And I was like, what else could be moving? So I went for a little walk. It was a very tiny house down my narrow stairs um, into the bathroom. And I remember looking at the tiles on the ground and they had like this... Um, spotted like speckle style design but the specks were kind of like long specks and they literally looked like worms i mean not like a real worm but it looked like the tiles were worming around like they were going like the ground beneath my feet was moving in like a wave like wormy swirl so i figured okay these are my reference points. I know I'm still tripping as long as when I come downstairs and look at the floor, it's still worms. And as long as I look at my painting and the waves are still crashing like I'm looking in a movie screen, then I know I'm still high. So I use those reference points to measure all throughout the night how ready I was to go to work. And sure enough, my anxiety just built higher and higher and higher as we're now three hours before work. Yep. Worms are still crawling. Yep, waves are still crashing. Two hours before work. Worms are still crawling. Waves are still crashing. One hour before work. Worms have slowed down a little bit. Waves are maybe just crashing lightly now. They're not like smashing against the rocks. They're just the waves are waving and the worms are inching. <sighs> but I was definitely still f***ing high. Now, I had every intention of going to work, so I made my lunch. I said nothing to Jasmine. I just left her sleeping in the bed. I went out the door. He actually was texting me. He's like, I'll be there in 15. I was like, all right, I can do this. Just wait for the white van, get in, and pretend you're normal. I cannot begin to explain the anxiety that was completely taking over every ounce of my being as I waited for this white van because I was thinking all these thoughts like I don't even it was some construction job. I'm, I'm like, what if they have to show me how to do something with a hammer? What if they're teaching me a skill? Like, well, obviously they are like I'm thinking I can barely figure out how to tie my goddamn shoes right now. How on earth am I going to start a brand new job and learn, you know, learn the ropes when I don't even know what ropes are? <sighs> but, you know, I was brave. I thought I got myself in this mess. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I remember the dude pulls up. I get in the car. He was this, uh, I don't know, 40 or 50 year old guy. Nice dude, but he resembled a land troll from Lord of the Rings. And if you've ever tripped, you'll know, especially your first time, that it has this morphing effect where it can make people's features exaggerated, kind of like their faces turn into caricatures of their self. Like, so if their nose is kind of big, the acid will make it like get really big, almost like they look like a cartoon. So I'm looking at this dude and he's got real messed up teeth. He's got this big nose, this bulbous looking face. And I'm watching his face transform into a troll in front of me. And I was having a really difficult time understanding what he was saying. He kept saying stuff and then laughing. He'd be like, oh, <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, when you're trying to laugh along. But meanwhile, they might as well be speaking Chinese and you only know English because like I could barely understand him. Like I was still so far gone. And here I am on my way to a new job. So my anxiety just built and built higher started to boil over more as as we're getting closer and the job was like 45 minutes away so i had a long car ride ahead of me of like mm -hmm. i thought to myself i gotta get out of this somehow i can't do this like I, could, I realized that if i show up to this job in the state i am now it's over like they're 
going to know that something's seriously wrong with me because I can't even understand the words he's speaking. So I told him I felt really nauseous. I was like, I wasn't feeling well last night, but like I, I, it's my first day. I couldn't skip it. So I told him to pull over to a gas station so I could go in the bathroom and puke. And so I, he was really confused. He's like, are you sure you don't want to just go to work? Like, it's your first day, man. Like, he's basically saying you're not going to be able to come back if you leave. Like, he's basically saying I went out of my way to pick you up. And now you want me to leave you at a gas station. And I was like, yes. It took a little bit of convincing, which was so hard to do. Basic communication skills go out the window when you're this far gone. But I convinced him to leave me at the gas station. And I basically just chilled in the bathroom, gained my composure, realized that I'm like 40 minutes away from my gosh darn home. I'm like three or four cities over. Got no money. I can't get a cab. So I did the next best thing I could. I called my goddamn dad. I sucked up all my pride. I called my father. I told him I couldn't make it to the job because I tried acid last night. I had no idea what to expect. I know it was stupid and I'm really, really tripping out and I feel sick and I really, really need help because I don't know what to do because I'm in this city and I need a way back home. And he was like, oh my God, Adam. So my dad drives out, picks me up and he's just shaking his head like, what on earth are you doing, man? And uh, I went back went to my room jasmine was still there sleeping and i i I looked at her i was like i couldn't go to work i couldn't do it i I messed up i just felt too sick and eventually i did tell her that i tried acid um, which is a whole story in and of itself because she actually reacted in a total surprising way and was like i want to try it i was like did you not hear what i said to you it was terrifying in fact it wasn't if it wasn't for her convincing me to try it again with her I probably would have never touched it again because my initial response was that was so scary. I am never doing that again. My first trip, I got nothing enlightening happened. I just spent the entire time in absolute panic, absolute terror because I set myself up for that. Like that, that everything that I did created one of the worst tripping scenarios you could imagine. But yeah, it wasn't for her being curious to try it. I would never touch it again. So you can leave it on her shoulders why you know i actually ended up tripping again and then it was the second time that i realized like wow there's something magical here but anyway anyway i actually like if you want to know what happened to the job they gave me another chance in a couple days shockingly anyway long story short can't believe i got the job must have just been my dad connection (laughs) can't believe that jasmine was down to trip again with me another time later and yeah that was the first time i ever tried acid and I hope you guys all enjoyed this story. I mean, I don't have to, like, break down the moral of the story. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> don't trip when you have work the next day, especially if you're starting a new job. Don't trip without first thoroughly researching what it can and can't do to you so you know what to expect. Don't trip when people that you're emotionally tied to are mad at you. This is all called set and setting. I've made videos about this. I don't want to make this go on any longer. But essentially, don't do what I did because that this story is a fantastic example of all the reasons why trips go south and people end up in the goddamn hospital or the psych ward because they didn't follow the gosh darn guidelines and it ends up not only biting them in the ass but sometimes ruining their whole life. So please learn from this story and do not make the same mistakes I made because my first trip was one of the worst trips I ever had. Anyway, hope you guys all enjoyed. If you like this story, make sure you smash that like button. I also want to give a big shout out finally to all of our patrons. We have not been doing much with Patreon and our Patreon has been dropping substantially. So I want to give a big shout out to everyone who still supports us on Patreon. You guys are appreciated. I'm going to be uploading deleted videos. So from here on out, if you're part of Patreon, you're actually going to get to see all the deleted videos. They will only be exclusively available on Patreon. So if you want to watch those deleted videos... Go below, sign up to Patreon, and the deleted videos are coming soon. Next couple of weeks, we're going to have a bunch of them up there. So there's that to look forward to. And uh, yeah, head on over to psychsubstance.shop, pick up a onesie. We only got a few left. We got some new uh, onesie colors that are going to be coming in soon. You guys really like them. And yeah, leave a comment below and let me know if this uh, has anything in common with your first experiences. And as always, don't do anything that I talk about in these videos. Take care, everybody. Cheers.